Well, Pete, it's January and it's Manchester, so it must be the Camera National Winter Ales Festival. Yep, first time I've been here, but uh, we've said before on these blogs how uh, beer is very, very seasonal. You get different varieties all year round. Winter is so good it gets its own festival. And today we've come to Manchester to try uh, wonderful silky porters, uh, chocolatey, coffee-like milds, uh, mysterious, potent dark ales, and uh, just wonderful, powerful, sherry-like barley wines. So I can't wait. I've got my glass and my programme. I can't wait to get going. So while he's supping and tasting and telling you all about the beer, I'll be telling you about brewing organisations, what they're all about and what festivals are all about as well. Well, Let's I'll be go. drinking. Right, we're in the bar. It's filling up rapidly. Yeah, it's filling up quite quickly, which is not surprising given the number of beers here. I think there must be about 200 uh, cascales plus sort of beers from around the world and a bit of cider and all sorts of stuff, really. This is a camera festival, in fact, it's one of the biggest camera festivals going. Camera, the campaign for real ale, largest single consumer organisation in Europe. Tremendously important. The thing I like about these festivals is that uh, they're growing quite rapidly now. Pe a lot more people are coming to them and they're starting to feel a little bit more like festivals, as in celebratory and people having a good time. It's all a bit dour a few years ago, but you start to see a real liveliness to beer festivals now. Should we try a beer? Yeah, definitely. There's one here which is a good lunchtime one, 3.8 Leeds Pale. Good Yorkshire one. All right, go on then. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Cheers. Cheers, first today. Well, this Pete is excellent. So I'll tell you what, let's do the first of your proper tastings of winter beers and I'll go and have a look at the festival in general. Sounds good to me. See you in a minute. See you a bit. So my first one is uh, from Moorhouses, a brewery just up the road in Burnley. Now they've been going, like a lot of family breweries around here, they've been going since 1865. The only difference is that they started off brewing mineral water, soft drinks and small beers that were under 2% and were sold in prohibition bars through the northwest uh, in late Victorian times and early 20th century. The brew was over 100 years old before it brewed its first alcoholic beer in 1978. But they've been making up for lost time since then. It's growing at a phenomenal rate. This is one of their biggest brands. It's Pendle Witch's Brew, 5.1%, uh, a best bitter. And it's a fine example of the style. Uh, it's quite rich, quite full-bodied. It'll be a little bit overpowering in, in the summer, which is why it's perfect in a winter ale festival. All the characters of the beer is in the malt, it's rich, it's warm, it's caramelly, red fruit, uh, almost kind of some red wine characteristics, just really warm and mellow and rounded on the, on the palate. You can actually taste the alcohol in it a little bit. Uh, it's quite full bodied, great and a half. I wouldn't want to drink more than a few pints of it, but for winter, it's one of those pubs with a, a log fire and a, and a steak and ale pie. It would be absolutely wonderful. Right, I've come down now to the championship bar. This is the bar where all the beers that were judged to be the national winter beer of Britain were set up prior to judging. The bar's been sponsored by SEBA, the Society of Independent Brewers. This organisation started 30 years ago, so it's about 10 years junior than camera, but represents now some 450 brewers. And it's worth remembering that when you go back to the 70s, there were only 75 to 80 brewers in this country, there are now 10 times that number, over half of which are represented by the organisation SEBA. The beers drawn from this bar were taken away and blind tasted by a panel of volunteers, brewers, professionals and volunteers likewise. And from that, the best overall was judged. It was Hop Back Entire Stout. Wonderful drink. Highly recommended. This is here from the Marble Brewery in Manchester. Now, among a lot of beer fans, Marble are considered one of the rising stars and really the brewery to watch this year. They've actually been around for about 13 years, but their refreshed, really iconic contemporary branding and their bold use of flavour have seen them categorise long breweries like uh, Thornbridge, our old friends in Wales, Otley, and Scottish Bad Boys Brewdog. This is chocolate. It's a seasonal beer that they only brew for a few months in the winter. It's 5.5%. 
and it's the silver winner here uh, in the old ales and mild, strong mild category. Is it a strong mild and old ale, both? I don't know. It's a dark beer. The first thing off the nose, what we expect from a good mild is a really strong kind of camp coffee aroma. That sort of mix of coffee and chocolate and a bit of spice thrown in that, uh, that's just enticing and very nostalgic. It's got bagfuls of that. That's, that's the really a lot of that in there. Um, but then... Oh. Well, the fact it doesn't develop like a mild, it goes somewhere else. Because a mild usually has that really strong aroma and then is quite light and easy drinking. This really doesn't go there. This gets uh, heavier and more complex, like an old ale. Um, you start to get the uh, spiritus hints in it, whether it's sherry or, or, or brandy or, or just some kind of strong, complex alcohol. Slightly burnt flavour as well, which is very appealing. Uh, almost like kind of a burnt toast. And it's one of those beers that you just want to have in a, a quite a small amount and I just want to be sitting by a fire now and, and contemplating it. Here at Manchester I've managed to catch hold of two very important people in the beer world. John Grogan, former member of the All-Party Chairman of the All-Party Parliamentary Beer Group and a Beer Drinker of the Year and Mike Benner, the Chief Executive of Camera, the biggest consumer organisation in Europe. So I'm going to ask them the question, why Real Ale and why Camera? Well, Camera first, Peter, we've been around for 40 years now, and I think people join Camera for two reasons. Firstly, because it's great fun, and so they can come to Thank these you. beer festivals, yes. and you know, we run 150 of these every year, try lots of beers that they wouldn't normally be able to get access to in the local pubs, learn to love real ale, and secondly, that serious campaigning side, that with so many pubs closing, unprecedented numbers of pubs yes. closing, uh, and 750 brewers out there brewing great real ale. They need every bit of support that we can give them. So if you love pubs and beer, join camera. John, tell us about real beer. Why are you? Well, I mean, it's just a great British product, isn't it, really? And, yes. uh, and it's becoming more and more popular. And uh, uh, the young, if you look at some of the figures now, you know, for people starting their drinking lives, if you like, real, real ale uh, is very, very popular. And I think one of the biggest things that camera have done in recent years is encouraging the lower rate of duty on small brewers and uh, uh, a lot of them producing excellent real ale and some of them now branching out into running pubs as well. And I think that's been one of the most healthy developments on the real ale scene in recent years. I find it fascinating. I go to lots of beer festivals, the, old, the, the one in London, of course, the, the Great British Beer Festival and others. People drink lots of beer. I never see any problems. I never see any binge drinking. Isn't that really related to people just drink beer and have fun and enjoy it? It's this fun thing, isn't it? It is, and uh, I mean, there's no better place to drink beer than in a pub. It's no safer place. It's always, uh, you know, should be well managed. And uh, the problems of binge drinking, which we have in our society, tend not to be in pubs at all. You know, they tend to start with people knocking back bottles of cheap vodka and cider and so on, maybe at home, and, and so uh, I think there's uh, a lot that pubs and real ale can contribute to that whole national debate about enjoying drinking, but drinking sensibly as well. I Thank think you. that's right, and, and, and it's really important to get across to govern, government now that community pubs are actually part of the solution to those problems rather than the problem themselves and you know what can be better than someone at the end of a long day going and enjoying a good pint of local real ale in their pub with their friends sharing their problems it's good for them and it's good for society in general thank you both very much thanks thank for your time cheers. good luck to camera cheers. Cheers. good luck and all cheers. the best to you all cheers, cheers. i found one uh, from a liverpool brewery and it's quite a special one. There's been lots of awards and prizes given out here uh, with the judging. This one didn't win anything in the judging, but all the people who've been organising the festival and all the people who, uh, who've been kind of tasting the beers say this is the one to look out for. It's from a brewery in a pub called the Baltic Fleet, which is on the Liverpool docks. Uh, it's a traditional sailors pub from the 19th century. It's haunted by three different ghosts and has seven different exits. If that's not excitement enough, it's now got a brewery on the premises. And it's made this beer, which is an 8.6% stout. Uh, it's a damson stout. It's, it's like perfume. It's like, 
It's like a very concentrated fruit cordial inside um, a very malty beer. Oh my God, that's just... I shouldn't do that because it's very strong. That's just glorious. That's, as I say, it's got a very perfumed taste, very floral. Uh, people think that think of stouts as heavy and cloy, uh, not cloying, but heavy and bitter and, and quite challenging. And this is like drinking, I tell you what, this is like drinking a, a really beautiful vintage red wine. That's, it's more like that than drinking beer. This is a find. Now, before I actually ask for a measure of uh, this next beer, I've got to introduce you to a very important innovation. If you haven't been to beer festivals recently, you might not be aware of it. Basically, this is a half pint glass. On the side, there's a mark that says a third of a pint to the line. This is really crucial because the beer I'm about to try and the last beer I tried are both 8.5, 8.6%. We have this notion that we have to drink British beer in large quantities. A third of a pint is a legal measure, and it's a very, very sensible measure to be drinking some of the beers that you can now get at beer festivals. So, for my last beer in our third of a pint measure, uh, I'm looking at Old Tom from Robinson's. Now, this one's silver in its category here at Manchester. I don't think I'll be too bothered about coming second because in the last 25 years, they've won 25 awards, including in 2009 being voted best ale in the world. We're in a curious position because this is a beer that, if you've ever seen it before, you'll probably have seen it in, bo in bottle. It's a very... Uh, iconic bottle, uh, got all these kind of Victorian cues to it, and it's revered among beer fans as a classic barley wine. And so I've got the bottle version here, and I've also got it on draft. Uh, it's very rare that we see it on draft. And I think there's quite a difference between the two. So the bottle version, which I'm familiar with, you can see it's got a bit more uh, head to it because it's carbonated, it's got CO2. Very powerful flavors. Um, Again, as you're expecting by the way, is that kind of spiritousness coming through, uh, lots of layers, lots of caramel and, and, and richness there. And the draft version, the, the cask version, much more subtle, much more delicate, um, much more refined. It tastes more structured, it tastes more like a, a classic. Uh, vintage drink in some ways which is bizarre because I think it's probably a younger drink uh, than this one is than the bottle is but really special and it's it's fascinating the difference between the two the bottle's well worth trying if you ever see the draft version if you're ever in Manchester you see the draft version check it out well Pete we've uh, finished our filming bit very nearly here uh, it's time to move on and maybe try a few other beers. Excellent. Manchester National Winter Ales Festival. People should come here. 200 beers, lots and lots of wonderful tastes, and very well organized by camera. Absolutely, and uh, this is my favorite part of the day because uh, we've reached the point where we've tried a few beers. We've tried about five or six out of 200 beers here available, and I no longer have to speak to, to camera coherently anymore, so we're now going to try a few more, which sounds like a good plan. Were you doing it coherently? Cheers to you. Cheers all. See you next month. <laughs>